Hey everybody, for those of you who've been following me on Twitter and on the community page on my channel, you'll know that I've been dealing with some issues that have been interfering with video production. It's nothing all that serious, but it did mean that I had to basically uproot my entire setup and have to reset it all up, and that's been taking a while to get everything back in order. I'm at the point now where I can mostly get stuff done, so I decided to go ahead and start making videos again, but until I'm more comfortable with the way the setup is working now, I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of light content, and I've gone ahead and moved all of the request month stuff back to March. So instead of any of that going up in February, it's all going to go up in March, and the Q&A video is going to go up at the beginning of April. So if you weren't aware of that before, now you are aware of it, and you have an entire month still to give me Q&A submissions if you're interested in doing so. But that's not really the subject for this particular video. Now, the subject for this video is a game called Watch Dogs Legion. It is the third game in the Watch Dogs series, and as you can tell from the title of the video, it is a downgrade compared to its predecessors, and I do mean both of its predecessors, not just Watch Dogs 2. If you've seen my reviews of Watch Dogs 1 and 2, you know that the first game was definitely a mess, and the second game was a significant improvement over the original, but there was plenty of room for improvement. Did they improve anything with Watch Dogs Legion? Well, it's Ubisoft, so what do you think? Of course they didn't improve anything. Graphically, if you set aside the ray tracing effects, it looks about the same as Watch Dogs 2, and yet it runs significantly worse, even without those reflections enabled. So much so that on my rig, which is now a Ryzen 9 5900X, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and an RTX 3080, it very frequently dips below 60 frames per second at 1080p without the ray tracing stuff turned on. If I turn the ray tracing stuff on, the frame rate doesn't actually seem to change much, which is incredibly confusing. The game's certainly not unplayable or anything, even with the ray tracing turned on, but it's just confusing why it has the performance that it does, given that it doesn't really look any better than Watch Dogs 2 did, and that game came out several years ago and ran perfectly fine on my i7 4790K 16 gigs of RAM and GTX 1080. The visuals just don't really match the performance here. I mean, at least I understand why a game like, say, Cyberpunk 2077 runs the way it does. It's not just that it has optimization problems. It's that for the most part, when you look at what's being rendered and how high quality most of it is, it's understandable why it's so taxing on hardware. You just don't get that with Watch Dogs Legion. It runs weirdly for no discernible reason. And all I can really figure with that is that maybe Ubisoft is running into similar problems that Bethesda is running into with their creation engine, only in the case of Ubisoft it's their Anvil Next engine, I believe is what they're using now. It's basically the same engine they've been using for the past 20 years, but they keep bolting things ramshackle to it, and as they keep doing that, it keeps making it buggier, it keeps introducing more performance problems, and so on and so forth. Bethesda's having the same exact problem with the creation engine. It's basically still Gamebryo from back when they made Morrowind with all kinds of other crap bolted onto it that it just wasn't designed to run with, and as a result you end up with situations like, say, Fallout 4, which I did try running on my uh, 3080 and Ryzen 9 5900X and 64 gigs of RAM, and it runs like absolute dog shit which makes me incredibly curious to see how poorly Starfield is going to run, but we'll get there when we get there, don't worry. As for Watch Dogs Legion, on the other hand, already performance is just odd, and while it is certainly very playable, it's confusing as to why their performance is kind of all over the place. And then the further you start getting into the game, the more the cracks really start to show. The first problem is that they, to put it very crudely, blow their load with the opening sequence of the game, where you play as the secret agent Dalton, as he tries and ultimately fails to stop a nefarious plot that in up putting DedSec in the crosshairs of an increasingly fascistic British regime that effectively gets taken over by the Albion Corporation, which is a private military company, thus setting up the situation where Albion is basically ruling Britain with an iron fist, and it's up to DedSec to uncover the truth behind the plot and ultimately stop Albion and bring freedom and liberation and such to the British people. Or, well, London at least, because that's where the game actually takes place, but that's beside the point. 
You see, the intro sequence to the game where you're playing as Dalton and going through the effectively tutorial of the game is actually the most interesting part of the entire thing because it actually feels like there are some stakes involved, you've actually got an interesting scenario, and then once you get past that and you get into the game proper, you're introduced to the core gimmick of Watch Dogs Legion, which is that you can basically play as anybody. And by that I mean you get recruitment missions where you can go and just recruit random people off the street to join DeadSec and they're all supposed to have their own abilities with their own specific equipment, although there are other pieces of equipment that you can give them like certain types of weapons and spider bots and things like that. And so in theory you have effectively infinite replayability where you're supposed to be able to go into any mission with any number of characters and solve them in all manner of different ways. In practice, you only actually need to interact with this in a few specific instances to progress the story, and then the rest of the game can be played with literally any of the characters because there is absolutely no situation in this game that cannot be tackled by literally anyone. Outside of those specific moments in the story where it requires you to have certain characters of certain types, you don't need to worry about any of the special abilities or anything. You can basically hack into all of the same kinds of things with all of the different character types, and their special abilities really don't matter much. To make matters worse, the actual characters themselves really aren't characters. The only ones with actual defined characters are the background characters that you interact with during the course of the story. The ones that join your DedSec team are all just randomly generated NPCs effectively, and all of their dialogue feels like it was written by a really crappy AI that was just throwing a bunch of random things into a blender and slapping the puree button. Whenever a non-story specific character starts talking, they have just odd inflections on the way they say things, and they basically sound like a robot trying to replicate a human voice and failing miserably at it. I mean, think about it this way. Basically, all of the NPCs in Bethesda games sound the same because they have the same handful of voice actors doing all of the lines. Same kind of thing happens with Watch Dogs Legion, except that the dialogue feels like all of these different voice lines were just spliced together awkwardly by some sort of AI without any balancing to try to smooth things out and make it actually work. The end result is that you don't actually feel like any of the characters you're playing as are actual characters. You just feel like they're these really clumsily made avatars, and that's really all they are when you get down to it. They're just randomly generated appearances with randomly generated names, randomly generated backstories, a randomly chosen voice, and then some perks and such that they slap on there randomly so that you can have some variety with the various characters that you're recruiting. Only by doing it this way, they've removed any ability for the player to actually connect to any of these characters. To put it in relatively simple terms, it's the difference between being immersed in a world and just playing a video game. Watch Dogs Legion is clearly, from the very beginning, just playing a video game and absolutely nothing more than that. It is impossible to give a single solitary crap about any of the characters in it, and anything that could have been interesting about the story is very quickly thrown into the wood chipper after the opening sequence, when the game just becomes the typical Ubisoft open world bullshit. What's that? You were tired of liberating sectors after the past several Ubisoft games that did that? Too bad, that's all Watch Dogs Legion is. You liberate sectors, and you occasionally complete story missions that are completely independent of any of the open world shenanigans that you're going on. Some of you may be saying, well, obviously, DW, that's how it was going to be. Did you expect anything different? Not really, admittedly, but I was hoping that they would have at least improved upon some of the aspects from Watch Dogs 2 that were improvements over Watch Dogs the original, and maybe smoothed out some of the rough edges, but instead, they've regressed considerably, so it's not even as interesting as Watch Dogs 2 was, and Watch Dogs 2 really wasn't that great of a game. It wasn't terrible, but it was just okay, and really nothing more than that. 
Watch Dogs Legion, on the other hand, significantly reduces the amount of things you can do with the hacking mechanics, such that it's actually even more reduced than what you could do in the original Watch Dogs. I mean, think about it this way. You could cause some real mayhem with the hacking mechanics, even in the original Watch Dogs, let alone Watch Dogs 2, where they actually expanded your capabilities. Then you get to Watch Dogs Legion, and about the only things you can do with it are hack some drones and maybe arm some traps. And that's pretty much it. No more hacking traffic lights or hacking various things in the road to throw off your pursuers or anything like that. Nope, just hack a drone and have the drone go off and open a thing or just use the standard puzzle mechanic of having the, the pipe puzzle where you're supposed to bridge all the connections and... Really, that's all there is to the hacking in Watch Dogs Legion. It is so dramatically reduced compared to its predecessors that it just completely shatters the idea of being a sort of hacktivist character. That was the entire idea behind the original Watch Dogs and especially Watch Dogs 2, this idea that you're this sort of rogue hacker who's working against the system. And with Watch Dogs Legion, you just don't remotely get that feeling. To make matters worse, the game just has a general clunky feel to it. The melee combat system is incredibly simplistic and stupidly easy. The combat in general is stupidly easy, mainly because headshots still reign supreme and the enemy AI is about as brain dead as it comes, which isn't really surprising for Ubisoft games these days. I mean, hell, look at Far Cry 6. But anyway, aside from just the general combat problems, there's things like the stealth mechanics being kind of wonky, partly due to the terrible AI. There's simple things like the menus being a bit more awkward to navigate, although they're certainly not the worst I've ever seen or anything. And even the movement and driving mechanics just don't feel as smooth and responsive as they did in the previous games. I mean, the free-running mechanics are very simplistic, even compared to the previous games, which they were really simple in those too. But there were still improvements made to the movement with Watch Dogs 2, which have seemingly been completely reverted in Watch Dogs Legion. And then the driving mechanics just feel floaty and kind of clunky, although they're certainly not quite as terrible as the original game. And speaking of driving, they actually removed car stealth, which was frankly an absolutely terrible mechanic in the previous two games, but removing it entirely wasn't necessarily the solution to that. I mean, hell, they even dramatically downscaled the shops in the game. Now, if you want to go to a particular shop, you just go up to a poster outside of the facade of the building, and then you interact with that poster, and it will throw that entire catalog into the... Uh, purchasable stuff that you can access right at any of the DeadSec hideouts, and you can also buy stuff while you're out there, but it's just interacting with a poster and standing in front of it and seeing the different clothing changes as you go through that menu from outside of the store. You don't actually go into the store and, you know, shop in the store. I mean, I know this might sound like a really petty thing to fixate on, but think about it this way. Going into a shop in a video game and then interacting with the shop interior makes sense. It feels more connected to the world than just standing outside of the building and interacting with a poster. And that's the kind of thing you have to put up with constantly as you're playing through Watch Dogs Legion. That's not saying that the previous games didn't have problems with immersion either, but they didn't have them quite to this extent, where it is basically impossible to get immersed in the world of Watch Dogs Legion. There is just too much, for lack of a better way of describing it, gamey shit getting in the way of doing that. And even if you put that aside and you just treat it purely as a video game, it's just considerably weaker than both of its predecessors. There's really no reason to play Watch Dogs Legion over Watch Dogs 2 or hell, even really Watch Dogs 1, which is frankly pretty pathetic. I mean, hell, I gave the original Watch Dogs a 1.5 out of 5. It is an outright bad game, and yet it is still considerably more interesting than Watch Dogs Legion is. Because at least a lot of the problems in the original Watch Dogs are with regards to things like the story and the characters and the technical problems that it has. It had some interesting ideas to it that just didn't pan out all that well until Watch Dogs 2 came out. 
Watch Dogs Legion, on the other hand, really doesn't have much of anything going for it. One of the problems with saying that, however, is that there's also really not all that much that is particularly egregious about Watch Dogs Legion. It's certainly a playable game. There might be some fun to be had in there occasionally, but once that initial gimmick of being able to play as basically any character in the game that you can just find on the street or whatever wears off, which happens very quickly, I might add, you just find yourself not really giving much of a crap about the game and just getting bored with it. And I've said this many times before, and I will continue to say it many times, hence I am sure, but the absolute worst thing a video game can do is be boring. That is exactly what Watch Dogs Legion does. It's just boring. It's not particularly bad. It's not good either. It's just dull, uninspired, and uninteresting. And that's the worst thing a video game can do. I would much rather a video game be bad than boring, because at least you can work with bad. It might evoke anger out of you, it might evoke irritation, but at least it's evoking something out of the player instead of just apathy, which is what a boring video game is going to do. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened with Watch Dogs Legion. It only took about two or three hours for the central gimmick to really wear out its welcome, and from then on out, I was just messing around with the game to see if I could actually get to the point where I could review it. And after about six hours in total, I just said, you know what, no, it's not worth bothering with anymore. And really, that's my ultimate recommendation with Watch Dogs Legion. It's just not a game worth bothering with. You might be able to get something out of Watch Dogs 2. It's actually a fairly decent game, although really nothing all that special. But at least it managed to make improvements compared to the original and was on the right track until they came out with this mess and dragged everything back, frankly, to a more primitive level than the original Watch Dogs and actually a considerably less interesting one, even though Watch Dogs 1 was an absolute mess. I'd still rather play the original Watch Dogs over Watch Dogs Legion, because as bad as Watch Dogs 1 was, at least it's actually somewhat interesting compared to how dull, lifeless, and soulless Watch Dogs Legion is. Thank you all for watching, and thanks for bearing with me over the past couple of weeks while I've been trying to get my setup back together and try to get back into the swing of making videos and all that. There are definitely still some things I need to sort out with it, namely things like making sure that I can get decent voice quality, because even though I'm using the same microphone as I was previously, I've had to put everything in a different location, and thus the acoustics have changed, and I need to figure out a way of fixing that, so... No idea how long it'll take to sort all that out, but suffice to say, I'm kind of back up and running, it's just that there are still a few things to sort out with that. But anyway, that'll all be sorted out eventually, so I appreciate you bearing with me until it's all fixed up. And anyway, with all that said, thanks again for watching, thanks for bearing with me during all this stuff, and I'll see you all in later videos, so stay tuned for those.